Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Saturday. It's about, uh, oh, probably about noontime. When I came up into the city, I'm going to walk around a little bit and uh, tell you a little story about something that happened in Da Nang uh, a couple years ago. It's kind of interesting. I just found it on the internet last night. I, I really wasn't aware that uh, gambling was such an issue in, in Da Nang, that uh, a lot of the Chinese tourists come down from, from China and, and uh, go to the casinos in, in Da Nang. But uh, we're right here, right across from LaCroix Road. Traffic is crazy. Um, twice today I've met cars coming up the wrong side wrong side of the road, uh, coming across the Iron Bridge. There was a, a motorcycle going the wrong way. Uh, it's just kind of kind of bizarre. But that's what happens when uh, when high season comes. You get people coming up here that don't know how to drive and don't know the roads and you really have to pay attention. But we're going to try to get across the street and I'm going to walk down that road right there. I'm not sure of the name, but we'll figure it out when we get to the sign. A lot of people out today, a lot of tourists. Which I guess is good, but uh, you really have to be careful driving. Now one time somebody asked me about a restaurant around here, and I'm not sure which one he was talking about, but it looks like everything's opening back up. Get through this traffic here. Everybody out having fun. But anyway, the story I'm going to tell you happened back in, in uh, 2020. There was a Chinese couple that uh, left China, came down to Da Nang, and uh, rented a, a room in one of the uh, districts by the river. And apparently the, the male was a, uh, a gambler. And he had basically just come down to gamble at the casino. And he went a few times and he, apparently he did pretty good. And, and he uh, attracted the attention of another Chinese lady that, uh, that worked at the casino. And his girlfriend kind of made friends with this woman. So they get, got to talking and, and got to thinking and being that uh, he was doing real good at, uh, at winning money because he'd, he'd won quite a bit. They decided to uh, pool their money. And here's a place where you can rent a motorcycle. Uh, pool their money and they'd split the winnings or they'd split the losses. Well, the, uh, the other Chinese woman that they had met, <clears throat> she gives him $45,000 and sends him out gambling. And uh, he comes back and, and he's won, he won $37,000. <clears> so he gives her back the, uh, the 45,000 and then they, uh, they're going to split the, uh, the 37 that he wins. Well, this lady th thinks, well, you know, heck, he's won this time. You know, maybe he'll win again and just let him keep the money. So just, you know, let's, let's go double or nothing, keep trying to gamble and trying to win more money. So, uh, he does, he keeps, he keeps the money, gives her back, pays her back her 45,000, which, you know, that's, that's pretty good. You get your money back and, you know, you got another shot at it. Yeah, we're not gonna walk that way. We'll keep walking this way. But, uh, about four or five nights later, he takes the 37,000 I think we will walk this way. I want to show you this guy's coffee stand he's got here. It's called One Sky, One Sky Five Seas. He makes some really good coffee. 
How you doing? Coffee, a little cold coffee. Yeah, I'm gonna put you on YouTube. Okay. You want to try? You can try. Up on the Palin Farmer. Yeah. Yeah, he has some real good coffee, and he's right here on the corner. There's an acupuncture Chinese medicine right there. Come check out his coffee. It's, it's really good. I've had it before. Hello. Oh, they got a little doggy. <laughs> Hello. But uh, anyway, he takes the 37000 goes back to the casino. And he loses it. He loses everything. Comes back and he's he's got nothing. He's even lost the money that uh, that he had won that he played. Well, you know the deal was that you know if he loses, they they both lose. So the Chinese lady that's their friend, she decides. Well, I'm going to give him another eleven thousand. And. Uh, Maybe he'll recoup the, you know, the 17 that she's lost plus whatever money he's lost too. So he takes the $11,000, goes back to the casino, gets wiped out again, which is understandable. I mean, you, if you win in a casino, you're very lucky, unless you're just really, really good at it. I mean, it's, it's hard to beat those places. Well, he comes back and he tells her, and she uh, she's not real happy about it. And uh, she wants her. She's out uh, the 17 plus another 11, and she says she wants her money back. Well, you know that wasn't what they agreed on, and. Uh, They get into a fight, and he ends up strangling her. And uh, he uh, he chops her body up and puts it puts her in a suitcase. Uh -oh. Hey, how you doing? And. Uh, what that is. It's some kind of a machine. Oh, it looks like a waffle maker of some kind. But anyway, he, he, he puts her in a suitcase and he, for some reason, I don't know why these people do this, but he takes the head and the hands and puts them in a separate bag. And he takes the, uh, the body and he goes down to one of the bridges south of the Dragon Bridge and throws it off the bridge. And then he takes the head further on up the river and the head's in the hand and throws them up, upstream a little ways. And I, I think they do that because they think that they won't be able to identify the body. I don't know. I've had it, had it happen one time in a case that I worked back in the States. And that was the only synopsis that I could conclude, but it yeah. didn't, didn't do them any good. But... Uh, the next morning, a fisherman and his wife are headed out to the ocean to, uh, to do their fishing. And they see the uh, suitcase floating in the, the Hans River. So they pick up the suitcase and, and uh, put it in the boat. And I just drive to the shore and they open it up and they just about barfed with what they found. So they call the police, the police come. And the investigators get out there and, and they open up the case and they find out that the head and the hands are missing. So they start searching the river further and they go a little bit north of, of where the bridge was. And sure enough, they find the bag and the hands. And they're able to identify this woman through uh, immigration records. And uh, they track her movements and they find out you know, where she was. And they stake out the uh, the apartment, and apparently it was right where this guy and his girlfriend were staying. And he shows up at the uh, at the apartment, 
and they snatch him. And they snatch his girlfriend too, but it didn't say whether they ever put charges on her or not. I didn't see anything to that effect. But she had to have known something. But anyway, they arrest him on the spot, take him down, and you know, he basically, like most of them do, he confesses. And uh, tells them that, uh, you know, about the game. Hey, I can see myself. Hey, everybody. <laughs> but uh, he confesses and he says basically it was over the money and, and, uh, and they got into an argument. He basically tells them everything. So he goes to trial and, and they convict him. They convict him of capital murder. And uh, this, is the, this is the strange part about the whole situation is they sentence him to death. But they assess him a fine of like 9,000 US dollars that he's to pay the, uh, the family of the girl. And apparently she had also had two children. And he has to pay $87, $87 a month to the... Uh, I want to try to get away from that noise if I can, I think. And I really want to walk this way. Let me shut it off and get by this noise and I'll, I'll finish it up after I get through. Well, and as soon as I shut the camera off, he stops. But uh, that was the weird thing. Now, if, if they're gonna execute this guy, how do, how do they expect him to pay that? Uh, I have no idea. At, uh, but he's supposed to pay 87 $87 a month. Now here's a neat little restaurant. Right there. Traveler's Arms. Huh. Like that lady's hairdo. Let's see where we're going to go from here. I do not know where that little alleyway goes, but I think we'll walk, just walk down this way. But, uh, I have, you know, I've been to Da Nang, and, and Da Nang is a beautiful city. Um, the people are friendly. It, it's a lot like Chiang Mai. Um, great places to eat. You know, you can walk around around the streets and, 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 and feel safe. And I have, I took some pictures while I was there. I didn't make, I wasn't making videos then when we were there, but I took some pictures, and I'll put a link to the pictures uh, up in the probably the left-hand corner of this video where you can go by, by and look at them. The pictures we, we took at Da Nang and I walked back in the, in the soys, kind of like I do here, and uh, really got in close with the people that were there talking to them. It, it was really an interesting experience. I, I was glad that I did that. Now, I think I will make a lift here. But I would highly recommend, no, I'm gonna go this way because I wanna get down around the Chiang Mai Gate. Um, if, if you're interested in going to Vietnam, Da Nang is, is really a beautiful city and it's not expensive, the food's great. Um, we stayed along the river. Matter of fact, we, we stayed right by the Dragon Bridge and it was, it was really, really nice. I'm sure that at some point in time we'll go back. We had even considered going over and staying there for a month during uh, smoky season here. Let's see, I think we'll go down here and take a right. Blue House Coffee, tattoos. A lot of people out walking around. There you get the one-way bar. Now, I don't know if I've ever walked up this, this soy. I was going to go that way. But I think I'll walk down this way because I don't think I've ever been down here. I have no clue where it goes. I don't remember ever seeing this street. I don't know where it'll take me. It may just be a dead end here and I have to turn around and walk back out.
but yeah it was uh it was a nice experience i was a little bit you know i was a little bit apprehensive going to vietnam uh, on the first trip we the first trip we went to saigon but there i found uh I found everybody nice and friendly and, and just, it was really just a great place to, to go and have a vacation. Now the traffic in Saigon is nothing compared to, uh, well, I mean, I'm sorry, the traffic in, in Da Nang is nothing compared to the traffic in Saigon. Little buddy, you're just having a ball there, aren't you? You got a little toy in your mouth, got shade. You're a cutie, hello. Hey, buddy. You just got a cute face. <laughs> what do you got in your mouth, huh? You're not gonna tell me, are you? No. <laughs> what a cutie. I don't know where this goes. It may just dead end back here. Some neat houses. But yeah, a trip to Vietnam is, is well worth the money. You know, if you're burned out on Thailand or just want to do a diversified uh, trip to Southeast Asia, I would highly recommend uh, Vietnam. Now, I don't know where this is back here. This might be the, I'll bet you this is the backside to the temple. Matter of fact, I'm sure it is. And I doubt very seriously, I, well, it does look like I can get through here. Maybe. Yep. Yeah, we'll walk through the temple and get go out this way. Huh. This is the uh, Burmese temple. We've come in the back side and we'll walk out through the front. But yeah, when we went to, uh, we went to Da Nang, I didn't even know they had casinos there. I wasn't even aware of it. Not that I'd have gone, because I'm not a gambling person. I, you know, I play the lottery a little bit, but I'm not much of a, of a gambler as far as money concerns. I guess I'm too cheap. We, uh, when Lek was getting her visa in the United States, we, uh, we had to go to uh, Memphis to, for an interview and just south of Memphis is a little place called, I believe it's called Biloxi, if I'm not mistaken. But it's way, way out in the boonies. You drive for miles and you can see the lights, but you, you're driving through, looks like uh, cornfields to get there. And off in the distance, you see the lights of, the, of the, all the casinos there. And I, we, we had some time off and you know, we really didn't have any plans. So I said, let's drive down there. We went down. And, uh, my game, when I, when I do gamble, or when I do get to a casino, I always play blackjack. And uh, Lick was standing there. I was playing, I think, $5 a hand, and I got up about $30. And she grabs me by the arm, just drags me away from the table. She goes, you're going to stop now. We're winning. We're winning. You're not going to gamble it away. And we left. So I was 30 bucks up. It's not too bad. And here we come back out on the south end of the moat. Well, I'm going to make it back to the car. I appreciate y'all stopping in and, and uh, watching the video, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.